Hey guys, uh, first off, uh, all rights to the video belong to Showtime. My use of them is not to undermine their rights or their ownership of the content, but to create a new and different narrative. Um, and my use of this video is protected under the Fair Use Act for commentary, criticism, uh, and creating a new narrative. Um, with that said, uh, my channel's been shut down for a couple days. I haven't been able to post videos. Uh, you can still watch my videos, but um, I couldn't post due to the Golovkin Canelo videos that I had posted previously. Um, they gave me two copyright strikes for two of those videos rather than lumping them together, which is what they usually do. Um, my channel, I wasn't able to post any videos. Um, and I was actually going to lose my channel tomorrow, uh, but I got the, the strikes uh, settled without actually having to take my videos down, which is great. Um, so we're back here. We're back here. Um, now, secondly, I want to talk about the comment section. You know, don't say crazy shit like I'm biased, okay? I don't think, you, like, half the people in the world, like, especially the boxing community, know what biased means. You know, anytime you say something that somebody disagrees with, they just call you biased. It's a ridiculous term. Um, it's unfairly favoring one person or another, right? Unfairly, right? I don't think that anything that I say on my channel is, is unfair in any way, shape, or form. Um, and, and, you know, I'll say like 90% of the things that I do say, I, I back up with film study. Um, and now bias, oh God, I don't even want to talk about this shit. Anyway, don't come into the comment section saying a bunch of crazy shit. You know, just keep it to yourself. If you disagree, you could just move on. Uh, another thing, you know, be nice in the comment section. I'm happy to debate with you guys, you know, as long as you guys are civil, right? But as soon as you start saying crazy ass shit, I'm going to say some crazy ass shit because I don't have very good social skills. And then I'm going to I'm gonna delete you from the channel. You know, you won't get to comment. You know, whether you care about commenting, I don't know, man. You cared enough to make, to make the first comment, so maybe you do. You know, just be civil in the comment section, and we'll all we'll we'll all get along. Um, number three, um, man, I don't want to have to say this shit in every fucking video either. Maybe I'll just make that my template. You know, it'll be like a stupid little clip of me saying that stuff, um, or like type it. You know, but uh, we're not talking about who's gonna win right now between Lomachenko and Rigondo. We're talking about Gary Russell Jr. and Lomachenko. We're talking about fight patterns. We're talking about traps that one's setting up that the others, adjustments that they make, uh, tactics for the fight. And we're gonna we're gonna look at all these tactics at the end of the at the end of the film study. And I'm gonna probably do two more rounds. You know, I'll do five rounds of this fight. Uh, we'll probably do two more rounds. I don't want to do too many because Rigondo doesn't have any film study of him fighting left-handed fighters. He has two fights. One ends in the first round where he like. Well, we'll go over it. <laughs> uh, and then the second one, the other one ends in the, at the end of the second round. So there's only, you know, 2.3 rounds worth of film study on Rigondo fighting a south, fellow Southpaw. Uh, so I don't want to do too much on, on this guy. Maybe I'll do another film study on, on Rigondo, you know, fighting a right-handed fighter, maybe one of his 12-round fights. We'll talk about some of those skills. They are transferable, um, but not directly. You know, a lot of the positioning is... It, if, if you have a good mind for positioning, you can kind of transfer that stuff. And that's one thing that Lomachenko does uh, very, very, very well. Um, and that's why it's going to be such an interesting fight between them. Uh, but anyway, um, keep the comment section about this film study. You know, Gary Russell Jr. and Lomachenko. You know, don't come into the comment section saying, you know, crazy shit like, Rigondeaux going to kick his ass because of this. You know, that's cool, man. I don't know. I, I haven't done the film study on Rigondo yet, so I don't know what the fuck he do. You know, how am I supposed to know? Um, but once we do it, then we'll be like, oh, this is what he do. Cool. And then we're going to mash their skills together, their perceived skills, um, what we're able to see from the film studies. Uh, and then we're going to do some keys to victories, right? One fighter needs to do this in order to, do, in order to win the fight. Or they're gonna, there's gonna be a battle between this and this and that, you know, and whoever comes out on top, you know, and we'll do some keys to victory video. That'll be kind of fun. Um, and then I'll make a prediction. Um, anyway, I'm gonna get into the round. Sorry, it's like fucking five minutes into there. Maybe I'll put a timestamp for when the actual film study starts. I think I'll start doing that, you know, because I fucking blabber on a lot. You know, I get a lot of comments about that shit. You talk too much, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a film study, you guys. It's like being in school, man. It's not fun. We're not like here highlighting people, punching people in the face. Like what kind of, 
I mean, I like watching that shit too, right? But that's not why we're here. We're not here to watch people punch each other in the face. We're here to learn about boxing. We're studying, okay? School is in session, son. Anyway, let's get into this shit. Oh, no. Okay. All right, so it comes out right away. Gary Russell Jr. pressing forward, tries to get him with a one-two. Then uh, Lomachenko slips to the inside, just like he wants to do, right? Shoots the jab. Gary Russell Jr. has a trap set for him right there and goes to the body. Really interesting, you know? So let's see. No, he doesn't make any movements. Gary Russell Jr. just comes out at him. But you can see right here, and this is really important, you know, when your opponent has all the all the control between the space, in a control of the space between you, you need to take that away, right? And what Gary Russell Jr. is attempting to do is take away Lomachenko's jab by making it less appealing to use it, right? Uh, and if he's able to control that space with punches, Lomachenko's not going to be able to slip to the inside, slip to the outside, probe with his lead hand, slip to the inside, shoot a probe, you know, shoot a jab, you know, do all those cool things because he no longer owns the real estate. He no, he no longer owns that space. Here we go. Now slip into the inside. Gary Russell trying to time him on his way in, right? And shoots a one-two. One. Too. But one thing that I talked about in the last round, I love this about Lomachenko. When he moves or he slips and he he you know he slips a shot, he moves, he never just moves one time, right? Rolls that shot, and what does he do immediately? He moves off the line. You know why? Because he doesn't know if his opponent's going to throw more punches, right? If you come up in the same spot, you're just gonna get cracked with a shot. So he does something very smart and moves off the line, and it pays off for him. He doesn't even have to know that the right hand is the left hand is coming from Gary Russell Jr. because he's moving off the line anyway. Now, Lomachenko, a little more wary, starting to notice that Gary Russell Jr. is trying to attack him not only on that timing, but attack him off of his own jab. So he comes in and he doesn't go for that like crazy dip in, right? Keeps his head above his front leg and he kind of dips just a little bit, dips a little bit to the left, and then shoots a jab, right? Whoops and then immediately moves back, right? So in, boom, and then takes a step back because he's he knows that Gary Russell Jr. already is trying to set traps for his lead hand and for that head movement. And then again, very beautiful. Ducks in, then co immediately comes out and starts moving out. And you can kind of see that Gary Russell Jr. is trying to follow him back and catch him with shots. Again, now, oh, no, this is the first time that Gary Russell Jr. has actually tried to set traps for this or take the initiative, and already Lomachenko has made an adjustment, right? He's not he's not staying there. He's not using the usual craft that he was using in round one and two. He's he's being a little more he's using a little more movement to kind of like I said in the in the earlier rounds to take that away from Gary Russell Jr. He doesn't want Gary Russell Jr. going first, remember? So he's just going for a walk. He's setting his own traps. Again, slips to the inside just a little bit, right? And then shoots the jab and immediately moves away and continues moving off the line. Uh, he might get tagged with that left hand right there, but there's no power on it, right? Yeah, it kind of touches him, but there's no power on it because it's kind of like pawing, you know, slapping, um, not landing with the knuckles. There's no like, you guys know there's no power in there, but he might actually land that left hand. I'm not sure. Does look like he, uh, you can't really tell, but the guard does look a little split right there when, when Gary Russell Jr. does throw it. So it might actually land, you know, but. <clears throat> so, ooh, Gary Russell Jr. again, or no, Lomachenko slipping to the inside and he knows that the, the one two is coming by this point, keeps his guard up. I'm not sure if that one actually gets through, but again, trying to bait it, trying to, you know, get Gary Russell Jr. to show him what he's got coming. It looks like it's blocked um, because Lomachenko knows that he's trying to time him on that. It's the second time he's thrown the one-two. And again, just moving back, right? And Gary Russell Jr. doesn't know where the openings are. Um, and that's another interesting thing about Lomachenko in particular, you know. He doesn't like to allow his opponents to lead. You know, I'm not sure how much of that that he, he did in the uh, Salido fight. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Um, I imagine Salido led a lot in that fight, <laughs> uh, but but um, 
by not allowing his opponents to lead, he doesn't allow them to get a look at his defense, right? To know how he's going to react, right? It doesn't allow them to to feint you, to, to, to probe against you uh, as effectively, especially if they want to be an aggressive fighter and you're constantly making them be defensive. Again, fainting him, baiting the counters, you know, the quote-unquote counters. Again, baiting him again, baiting him hard. You know, and, and this body shot might have landed, right? It, to be honest, it's not super important. Um, I don't anticipate Rigondeau, um actually leading in the fight either, um, you know, very much at all, in fact. Um, so I don't know that that's necessarily important um, but it is interesting to know that like the last left hand or the last chase that uh, Gary Russell Jr. put him on uh, he was able to land a left hand uh, so if Guillermo Rigondo is able to chase him like that there may be opportunities for him to to catch him and now Lomachenko starts to settle down you know he knows that the one two's coming right boom so he slips and it only it only winds up being a jab but he's ready for the right hand Right? Normally he doesn't use head movement as much uh, when he's jabbing. He'll jab and move to the inside. But this time he's, he's baiting the right hand, waiting for it to come. Or the left hand, sorry. And now, for some reason, right, Gary Russell Jr. had been chasing him around the ring for you know, the last you know, 40 seconds, but not really getting anything done, right? Just getting kind of baited into, uh, into throwing punches and not really being effective. You know, he might land that body shot right there. I'm not sure about the second one. Yeah, it, might, it looks like it lands like a decent shot. Not a lot of power, but he's not super, he's not very effective in his aggression, right? Um, and now he just kind of, for some reason, goes back to defense. And I'm not exactly sure exactly why he doesn't want to press forward at the moment. But anyway... Again, uh, Lomachenko baiting the counters, right? And he knows that, that Gary Russell Jr. was trying to take the lead away from him, right? So he's just fainting, coming in a little slower now, fainting him there, fainting him there. And Gary Russell Jr., you know, Lomach I don't think that uh, Rigondeau is going to have the same problem, but he kind of, Gary Russell Jr. telegraphs his stuff really well, when he, or uh, really poorly, like, well, it's a great telegraph, but you don't want to telegraph your shots. But anyway... He kind of ducks down like that, and there's no power on that that right hand to the body. It completely gets stuffed by Lomachenko. But Lomachenko's able to see it coming uh, from a mile away because of the way that he dips down. Uh, Gary Russell Jr. You know, gets really low, and he's done that a few times. But also, uh, just a few seconds ago, like earlier in the round, he tried to throw a body shot, a right hand to the body as well, uh, that missed wildly. But anyway, uh, now Lomachenko is able to to be the aggressor now and he comes in with that jab and I'm not man the frames the way that they cut right here he shoots that jab and I love what he does here after he lands it he tries to pin Gary Russell Jr.'s arms uh, to his guard again so he can come back with another shot but Gary Russell Jr. kind of actually moves off the line a little bit and he winds up having better position over Lomachenko it's really interesting because normally he would be moving Normally, Gary Russell Jr. would be moving to his right, right? But Gary Russell Jr., for some reason, moves to his left instead and winds up with, like, and it's just very slight, but he winds up with a positional advantage over Lomachenko instead of a disadvantage um, when he tries to kind of pin his arms in and come in. Very interesting. Oh, man, and this is fucking, this is beautiful. So right after that, and I think, I think Gary Russell Jr. does land a shot right there. Um... It'll be really interesting. That might be something that um, Guillermo Rigondeau can exploit. You know, so we want to we want to look for that kind of stuff to take place in in Rigondeau's fights uh, when we do film study, uh, because that has been ways for Gary Russell Jr. to uh, take advantage of uh, Lomachenko when Lomachenko really tries to body up with him and his opponent takes an angle. But anyway, he feints him right here. Getting back to it, he feints him right here and then expects a counter, so he immediately moves back, right? Gary Russell Jr. gets down low. I'm not exactly sure what Gary Russell Jr. is expecting when he gets low, right? Or what he's what counter he's trying to set him up for. You know, I'm not sure. 
But this is fucking beautiful right here. So what happens after that immediately? He comes in. Gary Russell Jr. thinks it's going to be a jab right here. He totally gets baited out of position because it's so hard to tell what Lomachenko is going to do, right? And Lomachenko knows that Gary Russell Jr. is also trying to set him up for the one-two. So what does he do when he's in here? He knows that this is the point where Gary Russell Jr. wants to shoot the one-two. So he catches him with the perfect fucking jab right there. Uh, he eats a jab kind of on his own as well, but he knows that as soon as he dips his head in to that little space, Gary Russell Jr. is trying to set him up for the one-two. Boom, and just catches him with that beautiful shot. And that's something that we learned earlier in the round. Um, let's see, I think we can just go back and look at it right away. But right away, whoops, not right there, but right here. When he dips inside, again, boom, one-two. You know, and you can kind of, you get the, you start to see that that's what he's trying to set him up for. And... You know, a minute into the round, Lomachenko's already taking advantage of it. Beautiful boxing, you guys. This is what boxing is all about. You know, Gary Russell Jr. made a very smart and intelligent adjustment, and then one minute later, Lomachenko says, ha, I see what you're doing, and catches him. You know, it's only a jab, you know, but that's not the point. It's the fact that he's aware of it, and he's able to take advantage of it, right? That's the most important thing, right? You can see what your opponent's doing, right? But you don't have to make them miss with it, you know, 20 times before you start making a counter. And that's what makes a really, a really good fighter is having, you know, the confidence in your ability to read these patterns from your opponent. Um, and a lot of fighters, you know, it, t it just takes them a little longer than it, it usually takes Lomachenko. But anyway, oh man, beautiful. Now again, oh, just look at that shit. Boom, look at that uppercut. So... I'm not exactly sure what um, what Gary Russell Jr. is basing his timing for throwing the jab off of, right? But this is also why you don't just explode out of your guard. Why it's so important to feint. Why it's so important to probe. Why it's so important to, you know, give your opponent, like, different looks and um, make them think in there, right? While, while Lomachenko is moving forward... He doesn't have to worry about anything. And, like, look at how stale Gary Russell Jr.'s guard is. He's not doing anything with his hands. He's not hiding the fact that he's going to throw a punch right now. And um, and Lomachenko is easily able to time him and land that beautiful uppercut. Boom. And uh, because of the fact that he knows that Gary Russell Jr. is using the jab very effectively against Lomachenko, you do have to point that out. Usually when, when Lomachenko is jabbing with him, uh, Gary Russell Jr. is slipping, right? Or he's, you know, not necessarily slipping, but when he moves off the line with his lateral movement, just normal jabbing procedure for him, it's stopping Lomachenko from being um, being as effective. Uh, so Lomachenko is trying to take away the jab now, and he just does such a such a beautiful job here. Um, and that'll be that's a, an interesting little little technique that he has. And when we do the film study on Rigondeau, we're gonna look oh how susceptible is he to this kind of uh, tactic as well, right? Because the only thing that's gonna get Lo, uh, Rigondeau out of it is being able to bait that counter uh, from him. And that's why this is the difference between like a fighter like this, like a fighter who has you know C level skills, right, in offense versus a fighter that has you know I say B level skills, right. Obviously, Lomachenko has, you know, some of the best skills in boxing. But as far as, you know, offensive skills, I, I do have, like, a separate criteria. Like I said, A and B. Like, B is when you have one set of uh, either offensive or defensive skills. And then A is when you have both, right? But when you move up that one tier, you're using fancy or using probes, right? We got to see this entire round. Gary Russell Jr. trying to counter... Uh, Lomachenko's probing, trying to counter his jab, trying to counter everything. But because Lomachenko probes and feints before, he's uh, Gary Russell Jr. is not he's not able to counter him at all. But because of the fact that uh, Gary Russell Jr. doesn't probe and doesn't set his punches up and doesn't feint, he just eats huge counters like this. Anyway, moving on. Now, this is really interesting, right? So I just talk all this shit about Gary Russell Jr. not knowing how to set up his punches, right? And just getting countered. And then you see Lomachenko just explode out of his guard and crack, crack Gary Russell Jr. with this jab. The reason he's able to do this now 
is because he has seven minutes of setting up his punches to work that he's already spent working with, right? He's already fainted. He's already shown in the probes. Now Gary Russell Jr. is, he's got to look for the feints. He's got to look for the probes. He's got to look for the, the shots that he's being baited into, right? So now he's got Gary Russell Jr. thinking about all those things, right? Gary Russell Jr. thinks he has more time than he does because, oh, there has to be a feint. There has to be a probe. There has to be a dip inside. There has to be a dip to the outside. There has to be, you know, and then Lomachenko says, oh, wait, no, there doesn't, and just catches him with a clean jab, you know, and that's how you set your punches up. That's how you create a precedent, and then you change it up on your opponent, you know, beautiful. Oh, man, and he does it again, just beautiful. So dips to the inside, right, and then dips to the inside again, <coughs> And as we just saw with um, with Lomachenko when he dips to the inside, he threw a jab last time and caught Gary Russell Jr. trying to catch him with a 1-2, right? This time, he dips in, and then Gary Russell Jr. expects the jab to come. He goes to catch it, and then Lomachenko tries to pin his glove to his head and then lands the body shot. Look at how, look at this beautiful boxing, you guys. This is just amazing. Now, the, the interesting thing is, and I've kind of wanted to have been talking about this, you know, most of the time, people think their fighters are, I don't know how you say it. I don't know how to say, like, what you what you think. Your, your opponent is your opponent. They're, they're rigid, and everything that they do, they're going to do correctly, and they're going to do this, and, you know, they're just like, I don't know how to say it. But your opponent... When your opponent is so much more malleable than you think he is, you can get your opponent to do anything you want them to do as long as you make them think you're doing something else, right? So what does Lomachenko want to do here? He wants to get Gary Russell Jr.'s guard up. He wants to bring his hands away from his body so he can land this body shot. Boom. And that's, you know, that, that goes hand in hand with Lomachenko's craft, right? He's got, Loma, he's got Gary Russell Jr. thinking that it's going to be a jab, right? So he can land the body shot. Very similar to Floyd Mayweather when he explodes out of his guard and shoots the jab a hundred times. And then all of a sudden in the third round, he starts throwing lead left hooks instead. And you think it's going to be a jab and he cracks you with the lead left hook, right? Um, but he, he made Gary Russell Jr. do that. He was the reason why Gary Russell Jr. did that. Uh, and you can get your opponent to do everything, anything you want in the ring. And Lomachenko is a master at doing that. You know, any fighter can do that. It's just a, it's just a question of knowing what you need to do to get them to react how you want them to. Um, it's not just seeing how your opponent reacts and reacting, but making your opponent do what you want them to do. Um, anyway, moving on. He almost, he does almost eat a, a huge counter right here. Ooh, kind of shaves his head a little bit. But beautiful boxing from Lomachenko. Absolutely beautiful. Again, you know, he can start exploding out of his guard and shooting the jab. Gary Russell Jr. does a good job of catching that one. Catching that one. And I love this from Lomachenko, right? Slips that shot. It's the ugliest slip I've ever seen, I'll be honest. But immediately when he comes back up, Right? When he comes back up, what does he do? He says, nope, I'm not staying here. And my video freezes. Let's see. But he, he says, nope, I'm not staying here. Because another punch might come. And moves off the line. Beautiful boxing. I don't see what's going on right there. I didn't see, to be honest. Oh, man. Beautiful. <laughs> so, he comes in. Ducks down. Comes in, shoots a jab high to get Gary Russell Jr.'s guard up. And then Gary Russell Jr., remembering what just happened, he got hit with a body shot, tries to counter right here, brings his left hand down, and eats like kind of a hook from Lomachenko. Just beautiful boxing. And it, it's really tough to see, but he does crack him with the shot right there. Um, again, making him bring his guard up, uh, and then choosing a different avenue for offense right here and landing a shot to the head instead. Again, craft, you know, knowing what's available to you, um, knowing all of your opponent's counters and, you know, this is and that, you know, and having, having explored all of these techniques, you know, that's beautiful boxing from Lomachenko. I love it. 
Ooh, so comes in. Whoops, and then my video freezes again. I'm gonna have to finish this video pretty quick. Ah, a minute and a half left. So he comes in. Gary Russell Jr. tries to time him with that jab. Throws the one-two. And I think Lomachenko knew that he was gonna throw the one-two again because that's what he's been trying to do off of the slip inside and lands that left hook to the head. I can't tell whether Gary Russell Jr.'s right hand lands or, or left hand lands or not. I can't really tell. Um, but Lomachenko, you know, he doesn't land the greatest left hook. But again, setting traps for his opponent for how he's, he knows his opponent is going to react. You know, beautiful boxing. But he definitely looks like he kind of tastes a little bit of leather on that, that last left hand right there. You know, again, uh, something very interesting, and we'll have to be, pay very close attention to it. Um, Guillermo Rigondeaux's positioning, the way he positions himself, and also how often he punches in combination. Uh, because punching in combination so far has allowed Gary Russell Jr. to land punches against um, Lomachenko. Ooh, now starting the body work. Comes in, ducks, shoots the jab. Gary Russell Jr. very intelligently catches it. But then he gives him a probe, makes him think that another shot is coming to the head, brings his hands up, and catches him with a body shot. You know, beautiful boxing from Lomachenko again. You know, just a very, very intelligent fighter again. Landing another body shot. And I wonder if this is also his way of, of stopping, Loma, stopping Gary Russell Jr. from moving to his right. Right, because normally Gary Russell Jr. would be moving off to his right, off of the jab, right, and shooting his own jab, right. And I wonder if if that's what uh, Lomachenko is trying to set him up for, is to walk him into the right hand or into the left hand to the body, because of the fact that he usually moves off the line with his jab. Again, comes down, tries to land another body shot. I think he expected Gary Russell Jr. to move again. But Gary Russell Jr., again, and look at how fucking fast this guy is. Like, people say this guy's like a C-level fighter or B-level fighter, you know. Like, from my skill set, you know, um, yeah, I give him, I give Gary Russell Jr. a very high C, right? But for most boxing, you know, <laughs> experts or boxing fans, you know, Gary Russell Jr. is the epitome of what, what boxing fans say is an A-level fighter. You know, he just doesn't get that record. He doesn't get that recognition anymore because Lomachenko beat the crap out of him. You know, so it's so interesting to see where where a fighter like, you know, man, I don't want to call nobody out. So I'm just going to end it right here. But there are some fighters that are also very, very, very talented and physically gifted, you know, like Gary Russell Jr. that are not even as gifted as Gary Russell Jr., to be honest. Uh that are also about as good a fighter as Gary Russell Jr. They get a extremely high praise, A-level quality. You know, people call him A-level for most conventional, you know, boxing, um, like, ratings. What is an A and B and C-level fighter? Um, but Gary Russell Jr., because he got beat by Lomachenko, he gets a C. Just insane to me. But anyway, moving on. Enough irony. Again, Gary Russell Jr. being very successful, moving off the line with his jab. You know, very simple, very simple technique. And that's going to be something that we definitely have to look for with, um, with, with Rigondo. Ooh, now Gary Lomachenko baiting the 1-2 again and catching him in between punches. Just beautiful. You know, it's not, this one's not as clear. But, man, look at that. He's just tearing him apart. And, like, the subtle head movement, too, right? Where he turns into the shot. And Gary Russell Jr. has, you know... It looks like he misses wildly. But I do think that he was anticipating um, Lomachenko to slip to the inside. Just like he did a second ago, right? So, he slips to the inside off the jab. And then he expects Lomachenko to slip to the inside. Tries to catch him with another jab, but... Somehow Lomachenko is just one step ahead of him. And to be honest, I couldn't figure out exactly what it was that 
why Lomachenko saw this one or this opportunity. You know, this might have been just like a coin flip, you know, and Lomachenko just got lucky not getting tagged with that. But I couldn't find any any other previous film in this round to justify why he changed it up in this regard. Sometimes you, you do just get lucky on that coin flip. Just ask uh, Conor McGregor when he knocked out Jose Aldo. I know, I know. MMA fans, you guys are like, that wasn't a lucky punch. But I'm pretty sure that Aldo had been fainting and probing uh, a different punch the whole round. And uh, then when he went to fake the punch that he was fainting, Conor McGregor bit on it and wound up just actually catching him with a great shot uh, that he, he thought was going to be a different punch. You know, and and Jose Aldo actually did land a great left hook on him that like knotted up his head on the side of his head, uh, in spite of the fact that Conor McGregor landed a good um, a good counter. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but sometimes, sometimes even though you do everything right, you just get a little lucky. Again, Gary Russell Jr. not setting his shots up and eats a big uppercut, boom, and almost a two piece right there. But again. Just beautiful boxing from Lomachenko. Finding a way to take away Gary Russell Jr.'s traps in this round uh, and taking away his jab, you know. I'm not, now, I don't think that he's going to be able to do that as easily to Rigondeau. I definitely don't um, because Rigondeau is, a little, is much better with his jab than Gary Russell Jr. Ooh, I don't agree with that from Lomachenko, right? But I wouldn't tell Lomachenko not to do it either. Um, especially after his last fight, when this was going on, his last fight was against Salido, you know, so Lomachenko ain't having any of that shit. You don't get no breaks, son. Fight me. Slipping on the inside of the jab, catching him with his own jab. You know, not a hard punch right there. Oh, and I love that. Shoots the jab, almost gets caught, and then ducks the second shot. And good job from Gary Russell Jr. being like, okay, you want a, you want a rough fight? I'm going to give you one. You know, not looking to the referee to save him. I appreciate that from Gary Russell. Ooh. <sighs> Beautiful. And uh, the commentators do say that shot lands. Um, I'm not going to play the sound. It doesn't really matter. But the reason that he's able to get away with that is he's, he's able to make Gary Russell Jr. think that he's going to slip inside or throw a jab, right? Boom. And Gary Russell Jr. tries to catch it. And it does look like it lands right there. But, again, all off the same motion, uh, the slipping inside motion, he's able to hide that left hand. Uh, and then very, very intelligently throws the shot and rolls under what could have been a right hook from Gary Russell Jr. Um, Gary Russell Jr. has shown a propensity to throw the right hook a lot. Um, and get under the counter. You know, beautiful boxing. That's very Mayweather-esque right there. I don't see what happened right there. And I love this. Again, they wind up slipping to the inside, coming up with the jab, and he eats a jab, right? And what does he do as soon as he eats that jab? Ducks immediately. Very, very uh, uh, responsible defense from Mr. Lomachenko. Vasily. Who faints him with the jab, faints him with the jab, knows that he's going to counter the jab right there, moves his hand away from his body, catches him with the, a left hand to the body again. Just beautiful, beautiful boxing. Anyway, video freezes at the exact perfect time. That's the end of the round. Um... I'm not sure if I should do more rounds on Lomachenko. I'm not sure how many more skills he's going to display, right? He's shown that part of his tactic is to monopolize the space in between him and his opponent. Um, and he does that with the, with the probes, with the fainting, um, with the slipping on the inside, which is also a probe. Um, he's shown ways to take away his opponent's jab. Uh, either jabbing with them, which doesn't work super well against Gary Russell Jr. because Gary Russell almost always moves off the line. Uh, taking away the jab with 
the uppercut, slipping under it and catching him with an uppercut, uh, slipping it to the outside, and then throwing a right hand over the or left hand over the top. I'm not, sh I'm not sure why he's abandoned that one so much. Um, but one of his strategies so far is to take a uh, positional advantage against his opponent. Um, and I didn't talk about this a lot in the last round. Um, but one of the rounds, the scenes where he gets, I said he gets a little careless. Um, he slips a shot and then throws like a wild right hook and then slips to the inside. Um, and it doesn't work very well against Gary Russell Jr. Because Gary Russell Jr. keeps moving laterally, um, expecting almost every punch that Lomachenko shoots to be a jab. So he's constantly moving laterally, and that puts Gary Russell Jr. out of position, or it puts Lomachenko out of position when he takes, when he tries to take a positional advantage against him um, by shooting on the inside um, off of that dip to the inside that he makes, um, and that's why he got hit with that right up, that right hook. And I didn't talk about it because I was super high when I made the video, um, but uh, those are some of the things that he's looking to do. Um, establish control of the range, um, and land body shots. You know, part of his craft so far is to lean on the inside, land body shots, um, bring his opponent's hands up, bring body shots, uh, land body shots with the right or the left hand. So bringing his opponent's hands up uh, and then throwing left hands to the body, uh, especially much more effective when his opponent is moving laterally into them. Um, and I suspect also that that might be why uh, Lomachenko threw that last body shot, uh, expecting Loma, uh, Gary Russell to move laterally away from him. Um, anyway, um, some interesting stuff. Uh, Vasily Lomachenko, you know, showing that he's made, you know, adjustments uh, in in the same round that Gary Russell Jr. has tried to make adjustments. Uh, just beautiful boxing overall. Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thanks, guys.